Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. Today is going to be a busy day for me. I have a lot of errands to run, but the main thing that I have to do is to tear apart the front half of the store. I've been gearing up for a different look in the shop, and I want to make sure it looks exciting and fresh and different. Um, so we're going to have to do a lot of reno today. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of work, but hopefully by the end of this video, I'll have it done and everything will look amazing. Let me show you what has to go. Tomorrow I have Josh coming and we're going to build a completely different shelving system in the front, which means I have to take off everything from that top shelf, take the top shelf off and scooch over the whole cabinet. The other thing that needs to happen is I want to reopen the front of the store back up. I tried showcases over the last little while uh, in this front area, but frankly things sell better when you can just grab it off the shelf put it on the counter and, and go. Uh, I think people are afraid to ask to go inside of a showcase sometimes, so the product hasn't been moving as quickly from these front cases as I'd hoped. So we're gonna mix it up a bit, and I'm gonna remove um, the majority of the cases out of the front area here, and we're gonna go back to having uh, tables and other displays in the front that I can put merchandise on. So that means today I have to empty everything off of all of these showcases and move it and uh, haul this Pepsi uh, cabinet, this old display here, out to the garage and we'll use it in the new store when that gets built. So for the time being, I've got to uh, start shuffling all this stuff out of the way. Case is emptied out. I'm kind of here by myself right now and I'm trying to load this thing up on the cart. It's awfully heavy. It's probably like a 350 pound showcase with marble on the bottom. But I've got the uh, one end hoisted up. I may have to call in reinforcements. I may have to call Melissa to come in just to push that cart underneath while I lift the thing. Then we'll go for a little walk around back and put it in the garage. The big guns have arrived. <laughs> Melissa is here to help me push it out. I lifted it up. She's got the cart underneath. It's now rolling. Uh, we're going on a bit of a field trip though. You know where we're going? Yes. Uh, around the block. Yeah, around the block and down the alley. Because I have no yard to push it through, which is a big hole there now. So. We should at least take candy to throw. Parade. <laughs> like a parade? <laughs> a showcase parade. Okay, let's get her done. Other people are out walking their dogs right now, like that guy. We're walking a showcase down the street. Another date with my wife. I think I owe you a real date I think so too. at some point. Uh, this is the easy part. The tough part's gonna be the alley, which is all bumpy. It's true. Help me to get the uh, shelf down off the wall. Uh, Josh is gonna come tomorrow and help us build a new one that's gonna go from the window all the way over to the edge, so it'll be a little bit more like that. Um, this front area I'm clearing out completely to make it nice and open, uh, but I'm in need of a table, which I found one about a block and a half from here. So Melissa and I are gonna go pick up a table, but we're gonna walk when we go do it. So I'm gonna grab the cart and I'll meet you out front. Now, I'm gonna stop walking for a sec. Melissa and I are walking down the road. She has a Coke in the glass bottle from our store. I've got the cart because uh, our vehicles are full and the place that has the table for sale is actually just a couple blocks from my store. So we thought it'd be easiest just to walk here and pick it up. Let's hope this doesn't go horribly wrong. Okay. Cart is loaded up with table and bits, and we're gonna make the wobbly trek back, the two blocks back to the shop, and hope that nothing falls off. Melissa's here for my moral support. Yep. <laughs> quack, quack. <laughs> and uh, we'll be on our way back to the shop. Well, we made it to the store, and the lady gave us a box of free firewood. They were doing some fence posts, but our son Stephen likes to have a little fire out in the back, so he'll be happy about that. Melissa's gonna get her car and head home, and meanwhile, I have to work on the inside of the shop and try and get everything put back together before tomorrow morning, which means the real work is going to begin. Uh, where do I even begin? 
this is one of those moments where you're just so overwhelmed with the amount of stuff you have to do that it's hard to think. I think what I'm going to do is um, push the cabinetry back, get this little area cleaned up, bring the table in, and then I can start thinking about the other stuff. But what a mess in here. Cabinets are moved back, giving myself a whole lot more room in the front area here for that table and some other things. Uh, next up, I've got to move this cabinet all the way down there to the window. So when Josh comes in tomorrow, he can build. We're going to build right up to the wall. That'll free up my window a little bit and uh, get this piece a little bit more front and center. So we've got to pull all the drawers out and get it shuffled down. Okay, I think I'm going to call it a day for today. I am not done, but I do have the table built and set up. It's not totally decorated yet. I've got a bunch of stuff to put there. The wall behind me is ready to go for Josh to build the shelves up to the ceiling. And customers can generally walk around the store. The aisles are clear. So that's good enough for now. I am tired. I've been here all day and I just want to go home. So let's check back in tomorrow when Josh gets here and see how the shelves go. Look who it is. It's Josh. It's me. Yeah. So you've come to help me build my shelves. Yes. Um, I've been busy redecorating the front of the shop and we made this big giant hole on the side of the store. Right. Um, and I kind of ordered product already to go on those shelves and the shelves aren't even here yet, but I've never been happier to see a man walk in with a mask in my life <laughs> than you right now. Um, so you got supplies and materials and all that good stuff? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll leave you to it for the time being, but um, essentially, you know what we're doing. We're going to go straight up to the ceiling and all the way over and down. Um, and I basically just want it to look like the, the other side. And you seem to be the guy that can make that happen. Sure. You made it happen the first time. Sort of. It was already half done, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, but it sure looks good. I think so. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to leave you to work your magic, and I'll probably film you while you're working at some point. But uh, <laughs> thanks for coming out today. Yeah, no worries. I forgot to show you guys what I picked up at the house this morning before Josh came in too. Couple little things, mainly just a little box, but what's inside is pretty special. So what's inside the box? Well, it's not chocolate, I can tell you that much. It is a bunch of coins and old money. And actually this is kind of a cool piece too. I'll come back to that in a second. But um, the person that I purchased this stuff from uh, is an elderly lady and she worked at the bank for many years. And she said when old bills would come through, she'd have an opportunity to buy it before they got destroyed. So she would sometimes swap out a modern 50 for a vintage 50. And these date to 1954. Um, and of course, as it comes to anything, condition plays a big role. But look, there's, you know, that's a lot of money to be sitting on for, you know, 30, 40 years, $250. and. 1950s currency that's probably the equivalent of a couple thousand in today's and there are 20s and uncirculated five dollar bills i'm touching with my bare hands i'm gonna have to get holders for these but these are all 1950s and then they kind of go up a little bit newer this is when they discontinued the two she got a whole stack of consecutive two dollar bills and uh these are never circulated uncreased perfect corners and, and it's all currency that uh, we just don't use anymore. So a bunch of twos and ones and all kinds of neat stuff. Now, uh, the other thing that was in here were a whole bunch of silver dollars. Now, of course there's Canadian silver dollars and I think it was prior to 67 or eight, they were actually all silver. So the older, the better when it comes to silver dollars. And there was a few US dollar coins in here too. This is a 1921, I think that's a Morgan dollar. And then I th this is the later one. I don't remember if they call it a peace dollar or not, but that's a 22. You can see that it's got the uh, different sort of crown there on Liberty. But, you know, condition's not terrible. There, um, There's some serious toning happening, but that's pretty good. What's this? This is a gold ring, the looks of it. And I'm looking, it is marked as being uh, 10 carat. So it's a good little chunk of gold and gold is going up in value right now. But one of the neater things that came in was this. This is something you might take to the opera or somewhere fancy. It's a monocle, but it's not just a monocle. You push a little button and that pops out and you've got your full on uh, re opera glasses. 
Really, really neat piece, mother of pearl handle. A little bit of a chip on the top, but mechanically they still work just fine. And, uh, you know, kind of a handy thing to have if you're wanting to uh, zoom in and maybe watch that uh, theater production from a little farther away. That probably dates to mm, the late 1800s, early 1900s, somewhere in there. And just in uh, really decent condition overall. And uh, likely this chain that's on there is gonna be solid gold as well. Beautiful, beautiful little piece. Josh has ripped the trim and everything off. And figuring out where all this stuff is gonna go. So you've decided to kind of space it out. It makes sense. Just yeah. do the same spacing as what we have going on with the drawers. It'll look nice and even like it's meant to be there. Right. Yeah, I think it'll look good. All right, this is just scrap, but this is just to visualize okay. spacing and whatnot. Yep. Josh is getting the framework put together, and we're trying to figure out where to space these shelves out. And uh, we're just trying to make a match what's already inside, but I think it's starting to look good. It looks like a little ladder. Yeah, kind of. Where's it going to go? Like, is it going to be a ladder to somewhere? Like, stairway to heaven, this is ladder yeah, to... be a ladder from the cabinet that's already there to the ceiling. Oh, good. I like to encourage children to climb precariously <laughs> over all my stuff. No, it's looking good. Okay, so this times five, I think. Times five, yeah. There's wood to tell the story, whatever, instead of the, tech, the color that you put on it, you know? So you're saying most woodworkers don't actually use wood stain? They prefer just the natural green, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, if they want, it, like, a, this color you would get a real red mahogany or if you wanted like a brown color you'd get like walnut which is super pretty and what would you do like a what's it called a french polish or whatever it is where they well it depends on what you can go with so many different kinds of finish right the 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 clearer that you put on it doesn't matter as much because it doesn't alter the color it just kind of brings out the grain it yeah it'll darken off. it sometimes a bit yeah, yeah, yeah what's terrible is when people will take a really nice wood that like maple or something and then stain that and you're like what are you doing i've seen that with there's teak. so much character in there already you know they they take a piece of teak furniture and then they stain it mahogany and you're like but it was so nice already yeah there's certain woods like this kind of wood is not a pretty wood right so it it's just matter. generic kind of spf sort of stuff yeah so yeah. It, no one cares about this so you can stain it looks like a little train track <laughs> choo choo <laughs> Okay, I think this should match your other ones. No, it's looking good. Based off of the care, carefree nature of the way I'm staining them. Which is intentional for, for people oh, yeah, watching yeah, at home. Yeah, yeah. He's it's staining so, it this way so it looks old. So it looks old, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do a wipe after this because I can't help but do that. I, yeah. I'm still gonna do that, but. This lays it on thick and heavy and looks it looks more like an oiled finish from years ago than yeah. modern. It'll, it'll soak in too. Yeah. It, I can tell Josh is up to something because he's got his camera on the tripod looking kind of that way. I feel like this is going to be the magic moment when he starts to put the shelf up. Is this the magic moment, Josh? Every moment's magic when I'm involved. Uh, especially since you're kind of a magician too, right? Oh, I used to be. Don't bring that up. Uh, <laughs> how could you just used to be a magician? What, do, well, you forget, do you forget the to, tricks? Or? Okay, so I've always wanted to do something different for a living, which is why I am an artist. But I didn't know that I liked painting until years later. So one day I was like, we can do magic maybe. Yeah, let's try that. And then and I got decently good at it. And then, uh, and then I decided that's kind of lame. And then I moved on to uh, uh, this, I guess. Mm. You know, this is a true story. M yeah. Melissa's, one of her best friends dated a magician. And yeah. one day he actually just left her and disappeared. Like, and I, and I was, I should have been more thoughtful. I said, you should have seen that coming and she did not like my joke. <laughs> yeah. Josh has been busy working away and I can see he's got the shelves pretty well all the way up to the ceiling. There's some trim work that has to go across the top and uh, he's trimming off the bottom here. That's what he's working on right now, I think is the trim for the top and the, the front. There's gonna be a nice little fascia piece to cover this industrial sort of two by four look I had going on. And he's just getting all his tools ready and gear ready so he can come inside and finish that up. Um, before long, I'll have an update and I'm hoping to start loading these shelves up uh, pretty quickly here. Josh has the shelf up and in place and now I am up on top of the shelf getting the wiring in. If you look at the other side, I have all those old little lamps, I don't know if you can see them, dangling from the, uh, the fronts. I want to do the same thing on this side so it gives the same effect. And to do that, I found three of the identical desk lamps, which will do the trick. 
Now just to uh, get them hung in place and get some power to them. Now the lights are up and in place, it's just a matter of stocking the shelves and getting all my merchandise moved over. And that's where I have to put some effort into how it's gonna look and what's gonna tie together. Coffee mugs and coffee, tea and tea infusers, things like that that make sense to merchandise together. I wanna have it really cohesive through the store. So I'm gonna have a browse around and make sure I get all the right product in the right spots. Hey Josh, you did amazing work today. Thanks. It looks good. I see you uh, recruited uh, Bob the Bottle Man to help you load up the uh, back. Deluxe edition. Deluxe edition. I thought Bob was going to, you know, walk right into that board for a second there, but it didn't happen. Would have been extra comedy for film. <laughs> defective deluxe edition. There you go. Moving all the coffee mugs. This will be kind of like my gift for your section, I think. Well, not that I think. I know that's what it's going to be because that's what's going here. Seems reasonable. Yeah, I'm gonna try and make it all solid coffee mugs and tea stuff, tea infusers, um, sort of liquor and alcohol related, you know, make it so there's something to look at over here. Hopefully worthwhile. <laughs> it's the end of the day. I'm getting all my product up on the shelf. Josh, it looks absolutely amazing. I'm super happy about it. I'm glad that you like it. Yes, I do like it. Um, and now, uh, I've noticed that there's an anvil randomly sitting on my counter. I was just doing a, a, a weight test. A weight to see if you could carry it around? <laughs> so that anvil, I traded him an anvil. Good anvil. It's, good. Good. it's decent, yeah. Yeah, I traded him an That's anvil it. for that shelf. Which I'm okay with, I already had the anvil. Yeah, it's and, uh, my favorite to be honest, but... Yeah, that's fine. Happy, I'm happy. It's an anvil that was on my floor not doing anything and now I have a shelf that's useful and I don't have to build it and now pay for it. So I'm happy for you and I'm happy for me that I got this awesome shelf. And I was showing you some of the cool little things that I got in. Okay, well we yeah. have we have some, you know, sassy little coffee mugs. Prices <laughs> are in Canadian funds. Uh, no regrets. This one's a popular seller. <laughs> it looks so cute until you read it. Uh, keep it weird. I'm almost sold out of that. One Tough Mother, Hot Mess. So they're all kind of a little bit sassy, which ma uh, matches some of the socks that I have. Uh, Inner Demons are the darndest things. I'm a girl, what's your superpower? This one looks all happy. It says up and with the rainbow, it says yours. Uh, anyway, they're just a little bit on the sassy side. And of course we have some men's socks on the other side too. Like this pickup truck, hockey socks. Uh, Mr. Fix It's always funny. He's like, you know, got the chainsaw and he's cut the flower off of the stem. Uh, grumpy old men sell a lot of those. Usually it's guys, older guys that come in and buy that. Um, my wife thinks that I should get this one. It's the skull and crossbones and it says, I almost died, but it was just a cold. Thank you, Melissa, for having such a, you know, fun sense of humor. But um, all these little things, I, I love this company because it's really cute and quirky, like the pizza peddler, pizza cutter, it's a little monkey on a unicycle and his little legs go <laughs> as you cut your pizza. That's my favorite. Yeah, Josh likes that one. The brain, uh, it's an eraser in a jar, but it's a brain, a little human brain eraser, popcorn eraser. These are all erasers. The kids in the neighborhood love it, including a bucket of chicken and each piece of chicken's an eraser. <laughs> um, you know, just fun stuff. You remember from the 1980s, maybe you had scratch and sniff stickers. Um, these are, not they're styled and smell like the scratch and sniff sticker but it's actually an air freshener you put in your car so just lots of fun stuff we're gonna fill up this whole wall um so i'm gonna finish this up tomorrow but josh again thank you so much it looks really cool and um it's gonna now i can actually start to clean the store up i'm pretty happy with that too happy to do it man thanks thanks so much for watching today's video happy with my shelf josh always does amazing amazing work which is why we bring him back so often and for his sense of humor and strength. <laughs> uh, I think he just went through the floor. <laughs> so uh, thanks again for watching guys. Have a wonderful day. We'll see y'all soon and bye for now.